your life. And this one right here. Amen. And when we see this one right here, even if you don't stand, if you can't get up, raise your hand. Look up to the sky and say, thank you, Jesus, for saving such a wretch. Hallelujah. Church, I'm going to ask everyone to stand. We're going to start this song over again. Hallelujah. The preacher is back. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I want everybody to sing this song.
but before the man of God comes up to speak, it's deserving that we bring him up appropriately. It's not uh, often that we get him to come to this area. And uh, I know most of you are familiar with the name Monty Cole. Amen. I can say a lot of things about Monty that are superlatives. The best thing that I can say about Monty is he's a humble man of God. Amen. Every time I am in his presence, he's just so respectful. He calls me sir, and I feel old, so I say, Monty, stop calling him sir. You know? But he's, he's very respectful, very humble, but he is a mighty man of God. We know about his uh, football exploits, those of us who are 50 and older. And uh, he's a champion, not just a champion on the football field, he's a champion in life. And so, beloved, we are going to be blessed by the ministry of our dear brother and his family. Without further ado, we bring up this Monty Cole. Come on, help me. Jesus through music. Uh, and so I wrote this song called Castle Makers because I know we live in, we live in a world, we live in a society uh, that likes to glorify people and things above God. Uh, and the Lord said, you shall have no other God before me. Uh, so instead of worshiping our jobs or our money or opportunities or people or family or our spouses, we should worship God and God alone. So I'm going to teach you this song real quick. It's really simple. If you guys will sing along with me, and then I'm going to get out of your way, and we'll have the word of God. So it goes like this. Oh, 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 come on, say, oh, 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 let's go. Oh, 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 yeah. Y'all sound so good. Come on. It's like a congregational hymn. Let's go. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I think y'all got it. Let's do it. Yeah. Hey, new clothes, new guards, new ride. Look at all the little toys they shine. The whole earth is a battlefield in the mind that makes you forget to be blind and make you forget that you're blind. I see a lot of us bragging about the money we making. We find worth in our network and worth in the bacon. Six figures, seven figures, never big enough. American dream, make you believe you should just 
gather all your possessions Better hold them tight Cause ain't nobody gonna wanna keep you warm at night It's no love, no love in this broken world Might as well live for myself in these dusty pearls Hoping I see my talent, I live for their applause I made it all on my own, I never thought them all Ooh, that's a saying, council ready to fall We'll be this game in the whole world if you lose it all uh, Who else could be a god? Look at me on part, y'all ready? Come on, oh, 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 come on. Yeah, nobody but God, uh, uh, nobody but God, hey. Oh, 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 oh. Everybody wants to be a God. Ha, ha, yeah, let me hear you, oh. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. But you can never be God. <laughs> uh, come on. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, I know I'm not the only Christian who needs this, but your pastor and your Jesus, so he don't need us to worship him, cause we already got a holy God who feeds us. <laughs> he's still sovereign in spite of the ever popular. Belief that he don't exist and he's forgotten us. He's got a plan in his hands that we don't understand. It's hard to believe what we see. They shooting up the block though. Yeah, they slinging rock though. Up in shot town to get gunned down for the iPhones. Mama put a kid on a bus, but she never came back. Baby's taking lives. What kind of God would allow that? Yeah, I know the whole earth is in chaos, but he's still the boss. We keep looking for ugly, but, but keeping watch. And in the end, we win. So put your faith in him. That's one thing we'll all bow down. To sing this hymn. Hey, who else could be a guy? Come on. Uh, who else could be a guy? Sing it. Whoa. Say you. Oh, yeah. Hey, come on. Nobody but God. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Hands in the air. Come on. Everybody wants to be a guy. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, say oh, yeah. Listen, uh, but you can never be God. <laughs> you can never be God. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus, say Jesus, say Jesus, say Jesus. Y'all put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. say the name of Jesus and I can go to my seat. It's all we need. And I got to apologize this morning because I feel the spirit and it's on me right now. There's something about the name of Jesus. something. <sighs> Come on, preach. You see, the word that I have for us today, I, I, I've been trying for two weeks. When I call Pastor uh, uh, Hamilton, I, I've been trying for two weeks to get away from this word. So I know somebody here today, you're here for a reason. You're here to be blessed by the word of God. It doesn't matter. If you could close your eyes across this sanctuary and not see the person that's delivering the word, not even knowing the name of the person just listening and allowing the Holy Spirit inside you to receive from you. To receive, thus says the Lord. That's what this thing is all about. 
because I was trying, I was trying to find one a little more comfortable for me. And for the ones that's preached here, all the ministers here, they know exactly what I'm talking about. They know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we want to, we want to have this cookie cutter or we want to go back to a sermon that we've, we've used before. But all the time the Lord is saying, you know what, my people need to hear this. And that was my prayer. So I don't know why I'm so, so uh, 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 surprised that the Lord took me this direction. Because as I start praying, when pastor said it was okay for me to come and preach, I start praying. And he said, this is what my people need to hear. How many know, we've, we've met my family. Our, I am going to ask my wife to stand up. And that's all the introduction I am going to. My, my wife of 30 years. And, and, and very, very glad. Now, all of these are my children and grandchildren and, and, and son-in-laws and daughter-in-laws. And, and if the kids start to cry, I don't know who they are. They're not with me. All right. they, they're, not, they're, they're not with me. <laughs> but it, 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 it is a pleasure, Pastor, all, all the ministers in the house. I recognize all the ministers in the house. I really do. And, you know, the thing that we need to do for our ministers today, we need to make sure that we are praying for our ministers, not just on Sundays when we see them. We need to lift them up every day. If you write down your prayer list and that you go through on a daily basis, you need to put your ministers on that prayer list because they deserve the praise they, excuse me, they deserve your prayers. They, they, need, they need your prayers. Preaching the gospel is not an easy task. The imps are coming after them because they're spreading the word of Jesus. And the last thing that the devil wants is somebody talking about Jesus. Amen. Talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. I will make one more introduction. My older, older brother. <laughs> Rudy, Rudy told me to say that, so I'll see. <laughs> he, he, that's my brother Sam. I love him. I love him. He's going to come visit us next month, and we're going to fish. That's what we like to do in our family. We like to fish, yeah, all kind of fish. Y'all excuse me one second. I've got sinus problems. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. I am excited. For the word. If you would stand with me, if you're turning in your Bibles, turn to First Chronicles. Thank you, Miss Grace, for reading that for us earlier. But First Chronicles chapter 13, verse number 10 through 14. And I'm going to try to stick to my text this morning, but I am going to allow the Holy Spirit to use me uh, the way that He wants me to be used. Amen. So if you're there, say Amen. First Chronicles chapter 13, verse number uh, 10 through 14. The Lord was angry. The Lord anger burned against Uriah as he struck him down because he put his hands on the ark. So he died there before the Lord. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath has broken out against Uriah. And to this day, they placed, they placed the place is called Perez Uriah. David was afraid of God that day and asked, how can I ever bring the ark of God to me? This is David talking, King David now. He's asking the question, he said, how can I ever bring the ark of God to me? He did not take the ark with him into the city of David. Instead, he took it aside to the home or to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house for three months. And the Lord, somebody say, and the Lord, and the Lord blessed the whole house and everything he had because of the ark. Because of the ark. Father God, this morning we come before you just thanking you for your word. Thank you that it's anointed. Anoint me to be able to speak and articulate the word that you have given me. Father, don't let me waste your time this morning. Use me. Fill me. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated this morning. 
How many know that we're living in a, in a world today that there is a lot of turmoil, there's a lot of decisions that needs to be made, there are a lot of things that's happening, and the thing that the church needs is the blessings of God. Without the presence of God, there is no blessings. In order to receive from God, God has to be somewhere in the vicinity of your lives, your homes, in order for us to receive everything that God has for us. So I've got a couple of questions that I want to ask us this morning as I start this sermon. My first question is this. Why is it that countless believers seem to stand powerless before a world that desperately need what we claim to have? Why does the church have so little impact on the world today? These are questions that I want us to ponder. I think they're very serious questions that each and every one of us in our own way need to ask ourselves, why do we stand so powerless before a world that desperately needs what we have? Here's a good one. Is the church changing the world or is the world changing the church? Why are there so many Christians so frustrated? You see, this morning, I want to preach to you on a subject that I've called or I've named something very, very simple, but it means a whole lot to us, and that is bringing back the glory. It's time for us as Christians, it's time for us as churches to bring back the glory. Now, I'm not picking on anybody here particularly, but I'm talking about Christian folks, people that have given their lives to Christ. It's time for us to bring back God's glory into our homes. It's time for us to bring back God's glory into our schools. It's time for us to bring back God's glory Watch this. Into our churches. Because where the presence of God is, God's glory is there. Now let's go back just a little bit. We're talking about what uh, 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 David did. David went back and he took the ark back from Obed-Edom. The Bible says that he got about 30 of his mighty men or his fighting men and they went back and they got the ark to bring back to the city of David. Because David heard, the Bible says, that he heard that Obed-Edom's household, his whole household, and everything in it was being blessed because of the presence of the ark. Said so his whole house was being blessed because of the presence of the ark. Now, the Bible gives us a great Description of what the ark should have looked like. It says in Exodus 25 and 10, it says, Have them make a chest of asher wood, two and a half cubits long, a cubic and a half high, excuse me, wide, and a cubic and a half high. Overlay it with pure gold, both inside and out. Make it with gold molding around it. Cast four gold rings on it and fasten them to the four feet with two rings on one side and two on the other side. Then make poles of asher wood and overlay them with gold. Insert the poles in the ring. See, he's giving us a, a, a description of what this thing is supposed to look like. This is where the presence of God is going to be. He says, make an anointing, anointment covering the pure gold. Make two cherubims with your hands stretched out, hammered out of pure gold. He's giving us a description of what it looks like. And he says, in between the wings of these cherubims, it's going to be the mercy seat. That's where the presence of God is going to be. He even told them what to put in it. He says, there's going to be a golden jar of manna. It's going to be the staff of Aaron. The tablets, the Ten Commandment tablets, it's going to be placed in this ark and where the ark is is where God is going to be so David understood 
that in the city of David, he needed the presence of God because of all the stuff that was going on there. So I ask you today, is it time to bring the glory of God where you are, back into your place, back into your lives, because the glory of God is God's presence to direct us in everything that we do. I put down four things. I put down four things that I want to share with us today. How to bring the glory of God back into our situation. See, we're, we're, we're living in a time that there's, there's too much turmoil to depend on man. We can't even depend on our government at this particular time. And I'm not saying that specifically toward anybody in the government. I'm saying it's time. We're living in the last days. It won't be long before the eastern sky is going to part. And the Bible said, just like they sang a minute ago, he's going to come riding on a cloud. Jesus is going to come back riding on a cloud. You know, he gave all kind of parables. And he asked the question, he said, well, what kind of fish are you? He said, he's going to be one, he's going to cast a net, and he's going to be on the bank. The fisherman's going to be on the bank, and he's going to be taking fish out of the net. He said, the good fish, he's going to put on his right side. And all the ones, the rough fish, he's going to throw on the left side. So what kind of fish are we? Uh, do we have God's glory? Do we have the presence of God in everything that we do? He says, whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as working for. So there's four things that I want to discuss with us today. These are my four things as it takes me to bring the glory back into my life, into my home, to cover my family. These are things that may touch you, but these are four things that we have to understand. In order to get the glory of God back in our lives, we must get back to our first love. That's, 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 the, that's the first thing. Mark, tw 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 uh, Mark 12 and 30 says this, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and with all of your... He didn't say with partial of any of it. He says, love the Lord your God with everything that we have. So he's telling us today, he says, I've got to get back to my first love in order for the glory of God to be with me and to do the things that God wants me to do. I've got to get back to my first love. Let me give you an example. I remember me and Yvette was dating. It was a long time ago. I had some hair. <laughs> I used, used to pack it down like this. Had, had my little car. We were dating, and she was at work, and I'd be at work, and we calling each other from a house phone. We didn't have no cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get off about 5 o'clock. What time are you getting off? Couldn't wait to hook up. We're going to go get us something to eat. Because I done found the woman of my dreams. I'm in love. There wasn't a whole lot I wouldn't do for her, for love. I'll take that. I used to go to the track to run. You know, she used to come to the track and she running too. Because we were in love. I'm, our hobbies, my brother and I, we, we enjoy hunting and freaking outdoorsmen. I mean, we're going to have the best rifle. We're going to have the best bullets. We're going to have the best camouflage. We're going to have all of that because we loved it. So we spent time with it, making sure that we can perfect everything that we're doing. Now, I'm assuming that everyone here has given their life to Christ. And I want you to just take one minute to think back when you first gave your life to Christ the zeal that you had for Christ, the things that you would do. That can, they could not open the church door without you being here because of my love for Jesus Christ. And I want to express my love toward him in music, in prayer, and in fellowship. We, I just mentioned we've been married 30 years. We do have a date night. 
Sometimes it's hit and miss. Sometimes the job keeps me over so I can't come to take on our date night. So that love that I expressed early on is totally different. The, the love of my heart's not different, but the things, the activities and stuff that we did is totally different now because I just don't make the time to do it. You see, when, when, when the Holy Spirit is in your life, when you have the presence of God or when you bring back God's glory into your home, there's absolutely nothing that can separate you from the love of God and everything that you want to do is to please God. Amen. But sometimes we as Christians, the older we get as Christians, we get complacent. So what I do is I... I, 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 I I leave the ark. I leave God's glory in the home of Obed Edom. I don't I don't have God's presence there with me. Now I call on him when I need him. But he's saying that I need to be with you all the time. So the thing that I've got to do, I've got to make sure that I get back to my first love. That zeal I had when I first gave my life to Christ. In order to see the hand of God move. Hallelujah. Jesus. Second thing, in order to get God's glory or bring God's glory back. I must pray. First Thessalonians 5 says this. He says, pray without ceasing or pray continuously. It says, pray without ceasing. In other words, we should be ready to talk at any time during the day. When we're faced, not just when we're faced with difficult, difficult decisions or when we're just having a great day, we should pray and ask God for direction and thank God for his gracefulness. I know all of us in here pray. Every last one of us in here pray. But as we get back to our first love, we find ourselves when we're driving down the street. I, I, you know, I'll make myself transparent. You know, I'm, I'm a man's man. You know, I, uh, um, I, I'm a man's man. I, 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 I like rough stuff. You know, I, 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 I'm old. You know, we're gonna climb trees and we're gonna uh, swim in a river with snakes in it. Not with alligators, but with snakes. <laughs> <laughs> we're not Tarzan. <laughs> We, we, we like rough stuff, but I find myself driving down the street and I'll have some praise music on and all of a sudden the Spirit of God said, you need to pray. And I'll start praying and tears start to roll down my face because of the connection that I've made with God. Anybody ever done that before? You, you, you're you in a solitary place. Folks just driving down the street think you're going crazy or something is wrong with you because all of a sudden you got these big crocodile tears coming down because you have made a connection with Almighty God. And you're not ashamed that people see you crying. You're not ashamed that people see you praying. You're not ashamed that you're in the presence of, of Almighty God. And whichever way he takes you, it's all right with you. So we have to, if we're, if we're going to usher in God's glory into our life, we got to have a little time. Then the psalmist say, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our problems. Yeah, keep on because I don't know the rest. <laughs> and by, yeah, we know that song. If not, y'all got part of it. Y'all can look, Google the rest. 
but we have to spend time in prayer talking to God. Now, see, I, I, I brought up prayer because I know everyone in here prays, and Thessalonians says that we are to pray without ceasing all day long. A prayer should be on our heart, not just, just verbally praying, but we see something, we pray about it. But there's a lot of Christians that I know, and I've gone through this stage myself where I'm using God's hand opposed to seeking his face. See, my granddaddy, can I tell you a story about my granddaddy? Sam would appreciate it. My wife, she met my granddaddy. None of my kids met him because he had gone on to be with the Lord uh, before they were born. But, but the, my, my granddad used to call that. We had a, a grocery store called the Mad Butcher. And, and, and it was down the street, it, walking distance, because we walked to it several times, or would walk to it, and, but he used to call me. I would come home in the summertime, and, and I, I was still active in, in my sport, and, and uh, um, he would say, hey, what you doing? Call me on the phone. And I said, I'm not doing anything. He said, what you doing about 4 o'clock? 4 o'clock, I'm getting ready to go and work out. And he said, I need to go to the Mad Butcher. I need you to come pick me up. Well, Leo, click, he done hung up the phone. <laughs> I'm getting ready to give him an explanation. I can't come at, I can't come at 4 o'clock. <laughs> he, he done hung up the phone. So you know what he's expecting? Me to be there at 4 o'clock. You know where I was? I was there at 4 o'clock. <laughs> But I, I, I bring that story because it's, it's a reality in a lot of us as Christians that pray to Almighty God. Because what we'll do on occasion is what we'll do is we'll call God up on the phone and say, Lord, you know my, my rent is due and I don't have the funds to do, to pay it. You know my child is going crazy and I need help from you. We put our whole laundry list out to God in our prayer and before God can even communicate back to us, we hang up the phone. We stop the prayer. My story had just came on so I need to go watch TV. There's somebody at the door. But prayer with God is a communication between me and him. He wants to talk to me just as much as I want to talk to him. And it's not a prayer or it's not a communication if he's just one-sided. We're talking about bringing God's glory back in our house. Look, look that up for me again. Uh, I, I, we were riding, we were listening to uh, somebody preaching yesterday, and they said something, and, and I said, hey, write that down, because i got to use it tomorrow. I, did, I didn't memorize it, but I had to write it down. And, 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 and I, I need to share it, because it, it, it's, it's appropriate for us what we are. We want the glory of God. It was in the home of Obed-Edom. What is it? And we wonder why things aren't going right because just maybe the presence of God that ark of the covenant where they met and they talked with God Moses met in the tent they had a holy tent where Moses would go in and God would speak to him through the ark Joshua when he took charge see Joshua made a mistake mm, hallelujah see Joshua made a mistake and he put the ark behind them all the time, the ark's supposed to be in front of them. So where is your ark today? Is it in front of you or is it behind you? Knowing that the ark is the presence of God. This ain't in my notes, but you remember when Joshua was leading them across into the promised land? He says the Levites, they got the ark and they got in front. And he said when they got to the Jordan, the, it, it was over flood playing stage. Yes. And he says when they stepped yes. a foot into the water. Yes, yes, so upstream, the water just stopped flowing. It, 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 it parted in order for them to walk over from one side to the other. Yes, into the land that God said would be flowing with milk and honey. Yes. 
God has a land for each and every one of us flowing with milk and honey. All we got to do is get our positions right. We can't put God on the back burner and think that we're going to make it across into our land of milk and honey. We've got to have God first in our lives. You know, back, back in the old days, and some of the older people here might, uh, might remember that, 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 that there used to be a bumper sticker on some cars. And on this car, it had a bumper sticker that says, God is my co-pilot. Y'all, anybody remember that bumper sticker that said, God is my co-pilot? God shouldn't be your co-pilot. If God is your co-pilot, that means that he's taking orders from you. What we need is God to be our pilot, and we be the co-pilot. So the first thing we want to do, we got to get back to our first love. We got to have that zeal for God. We got to have that understanding that he's in control of everything that we do. And the next thing that we do, we must pray. You see, Elijah prayed and fire came from heaven. Abraham prayed for a son and God blessed him with a son. Moses prayed that the Red Sea would part and it did. Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane and with so much zeal that he sweated beads of blood. He told us if we just speak to the mountain. Just speak to the mountain. If you're ever going to see fire fall from heaven, you got to develop a prayer life that touches the heart of God so that God will start to release everything all of your heavenly blessings, everything that he has for you, everything that he has for you. I'm going to get through this one. I, I kind of touched on it. You got to seek God's face and not just his hand. If we want God's presence, if we want to receive, if we want that, that ark of God's covenant, covenant in, in our lives, in our homes, we got to seek God's face. You said, preacher, what, what, what does it mean to seek the face of, of God? See, a lot of times what we do is we, 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 we turn God into a Holy Ghost Santa Claus and we ask him for all the gifts and things that we need opposed to want to be more like him. You see, when, when, when you start to seek the face of God, now I change from who I am. See, the Apostle Paul said it this way. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. He says, I've been crucified. He says, it's no longer I who live, but it's Christ that lives in me. He said, the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. You see, when, when, when we stop seeking God's hand, now it ain't nothing wrong. Don't misunderstand me. Don't go back and start tweeting saying that he said we shouldn't pray for stuff. We should because he says we have not because we, we ask not. So we should pray for things. But the most important thing is this, is we want to be more like Christ. Ephesians 5 and 1 said we are to be imitators of Christ. See, when we start seeking God's face, we become imitators of Christ, and Christ's Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And the fruit of God's Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, depending on what translation you're using. There's some good, some long-suffering and all that. That's what should be inside of us when people can. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to embarrass my wife and myself, but I got to do it. Because when we start to imitate Christ, people should be able to see Christ. Christ should be the center of our lives. So I'm going to give you, <laughs> I'm going to give you three imitations. And I, I need the help of, of the congregation to, to identify these. And they're going to be relatively easy. Now, my acting is not, I'm not an actor, but... Uh, I'm going to give you these imitations, and, and y'all yell it out when you know who they are. All right, uh, and I'll give you a hint for each one of them. The first one is a famous basketball player, and when he was slam dunk, he was sticking. Michael, Michael Jordan. Michael yeah. Jordan. Yeah, they got it. I got it all over them, huh? <laughs> My, Michael Jordan. All right. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Elvis Presley, somebody said, I heard him say it. I know these imitations aren't very good, but, but we, we've got two for two. We're two, we're two for two. My, my leg is hurting right now, but if I could moonwalk, I would moonwalk. Who? 
Michael Jackson. There you go. Michael, three imitations of three people that we all have heard, heard of or have seen perform in some form or fashion. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 1 that we ought to imitate Christ. Now, as sorry and lame as my imitations were, we got all three. We got a hundred, three for three on those imitations. So my question, if Ephesians 5 and 1 says that we ought to imitate Christ, why is it that when you're at the grocery store, you're at the gas station, when you're on your job, that folks don't see Christ in you? You see, when we stop seeking God's hand and seeking God's face, so that we can be more like Christ inside out. People will see Christ in us. They will see the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the goodness, the kindness, the self-control. They will see all the attributes that made up Jesus Christ. As sorry as my imitations what are we imitating our lives after if Christ is telling us to imitate him and folks don't see Christ in us? Are you seeking his hand or are you seeking his face? He says it's time for us to start seeking his face. He wants us to be more like him. He wants us to be more like him. The first one was what? We got to return to our first love. Then we must pray. Now we got to seek God's face and not just his hand then my last one is this we've got to believe we've got to believe that God is who he say he is if he says my presence my ark the ark of the covenant was in Obed Edom's house and the Bible teaches us pastor he says as long as it was in Obed Edom's house he was blessed. Not only, Elder, that he was blessed, but his whole, oh, y'all ain't getting this this morning. See, when the presence of God is in your house, not only you are blessed, but the whole household is blessed because of the ark is in the, or because of the presence of God is in your household. So he says, we got to believe. Mark 11, 24 says, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you receive it and it shall be yours. You got to believe that if I bring God into my house and everything that I do is, is, is circles around his presence, I've got to believe that, that, that God said it, I believe it. If God said it, He's going to do it. What God has for me is for me. It may be darker than a thousand midnights in some of our lives right now, but I got to believe that God said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I got to believe it. He told us. <laughs> he, 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 gave, he gave us the answer. He, he says, and, and everyone here probably can quote this. He says, if my people. He says, if you want the glory of God to be in your land, in your household, over your family. He says, if my people. Now, he's not talking about the folks out in the world. He's not talking about the ones that's on Skid Row or the folks that, 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 that don't, don't know him. He says, if my people, who he's talking to, he's talking about his church. He's talking about the ones that's given their lives to Christ. He's talking about you. He's talking about me. He says, if my people that are called by my name. You see, we all know that scripture. So he's telling us, if we want the glory of God within us and in our homes, he says, if you would humble yourself. What else did he say? Pray. Oh, hallelujah. And turn from your wicked ways. 
Now, see, you got to understand something about that scripture right there that a lot of folks miss. They understand what he's saying, but what he's saying was, hey, you got to do something first. He said, I'm not going to move until you do your part. He says, if, which, you're an educated man. What is if? What is, uh, all right, take you too long. <laughs> if, <laughs> if give us an option. It's not saying that we got to do it. He says, if you do it. That's, it's conditional. See that? He knew what it was. You didn't even know, Rudy. It's conditional. He says, if, then. He says, somebody over here, over here say, if, over here say, then. Weak over here. If, then, if. He says, in order to see the hand of God move, if. My people that are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways, seek my face. He says, not, uh, uh, not, not until. I'm talking to somebody in this place today. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody needs the glory of God to come back into your home. And God said, if you do these things, then I will unleash my glory on your children that are running rampant, on your finances that needs help, on your health and your bodies. He says, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to let the Ark of the Covenant come into your home until you then. He says, if you do it, then, if, then. Verse number 14 said this, and we've already said it. It says, the ark of, the God, the ark of God remained in the home of Obed-Edom, Obed-Edom in his house for three months. And the Lord blessed the whole household and everything in it because of God's presence. So the Lord, last evening as I was studying, he said, ask your people, just about four, maybe five folks, just raise your hand so we won't all be at, saying it at once. What, what needs to return, what, what needs to happen in order for the presence of God to be in your home. Don't be embarrassed because what you say, somebody else may be thinking the exact same thing and it may bless them. So it, give, give me a volunteer. What, what needs to change in order for the presence of God to be fully? Prioritizing God over others. Is that good? Prioritizing. We got to prioritize. We got, we, we, we got to put God first. The Bible says that Jesus, the first thing he got up in the morning, he would go find a secluded place and he would pray. He spent time with God. He had his priorities right. The Bible says, he, he says, a, a very profound statement, he says, I only do as I see my Father in heaven do. Who else? Give me another. Come on. Praying together. My, my, my. If we pray together. You see, the devil, this is what the devil wants to do. I'm talking to the married folks and the ones that's going to be married. The devil wants to divide and conquer. If he can divide you two or us two or the, the husband from the wife, then what about them children and grandchildren? See, he's conquered us. But as we come together, two touching and agreeing, I, 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 last time I read my Bible, he says, I'll be right there with you. Amen. So in order to get the, the power, the, 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 the ark of God's covenant, the, the, the glory of God, there, we must pray together. Amen. That's good. That's good. Thank you. I had two. Come on. Surrendering my will for his. Ah, hallelujah. I remember 
back in 2000 and well we moved in 2001 Bobby back in 2000 1999 uh, um, the Lord spoke in and in, in, in a group like this, we were actually at Christ Fellowship on prayer night. He had given me a word. He said, hey, you're supposed to be in Arkansas. That's what he told me. And a young lady stood up and prophesied that Thursday at prayer and said that the Lord is calling you to Arkansas. <laughs> I had to surrender my will. I had a nice job, six-figure job, you know, very known in, in, in the community. But now I, God is saying, you, you, you've got to go back. And we had to surrender. It took us two years. <laughs> two years to surrender to God's will. And I'll, I'll leave it at this. The worst two years of my life. I felt like the Israelites that were walking around in the wilderness for 40 years not knowing what to go, not which way to go or what to do because I wasn't in God's will. It wasn't until we surrendered, it wasn't until we surrendered that we felt the peace of God. We felt, we felt God's presence back in our home again. The glory of God was back with us again. It wasn't no longer in the home of Obed-Edom. It was now back Hallelujah. in the city of David. Yes. Hallelujah. I think I saw your hand, son. Take it all to God. Take it everything to God in prayer. You know, I'll let you down. Pastor loves y'all with all of his heart. But because he's man, he'll let you down. Some may come up. He may get sick. He'll let you down. But everything in God in prayer, everything, take it to the Lord. Yeah. All of these things, I'm coming to you. I see you here. Everything that we're saying here are ways to bring back God's glory into our homes, bringing back the ark of God, the presence of God within our homes and within our families. Is that you, Miss Emma? Yeah. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, she said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> she said, make it the first thing you do in the morning. We mentioned just in Psalms, the Bible says that Jesus, early in the morning, they were looking for him. He'd be out in a secluded place, and he'd be praying. That was the first thing that he did. It's still, it says that before it even got light, he, 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 was, he was praying, bringing back God's glory. We've got to pray. We've got to get start our day talking to the Father and asking for his directions. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We've got to spend time in his word. He tells us in Psalms, he says, your word have I hidden. He says, I've hidden your word right here that I don't sin against you. He says, your word is the lamp and the light. He says, I've got to study God's word. The way we defeat the devil is not with fists. We defeat the devil with... Je Jesus said... We've got to apply it to our lives. We want the presence of God. Jesus said in Matthews, he says, we don't live by bread alone. But we live by the word of God. We live on the word of God. You know, I, I start writing a sermon. I'm, I'll take one more, if there is one more. And, and writing a sermon on stepping out on God's word. I, I done preached about four sermons today. <laughs> I done messed this all up. Stepping out on God's word. See, Peter, Peter is the only other man in history that's ever walked on water. Of course, Jesus walked on water. He came. And Peter and the, and the folks, the other disciples in the boat, were, they, they were afraid. They thought it was a ghost. But Peter said, Lord, if it's you. He asked him a question, very, very important question. He said, Lord, and, see, and that's what we have to do. We have to make sure that before we start to try to walk on water, because we can 
He says, we got to ask a question. He says, Lord, if it's really you calling me to Arkansas, if it's really you calling me to this other job, if it's really you calling me to, to this young man or this young lady, he said, command me to get out of the boat and walk on water. Jesus said one word. Come. That's all he said was come. And Peter got out on the word of God. <laughs> and he walked on water. <laughs> yeah. To the human side of him. <laughs> took, took over. He, 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 he took God's word for his word. Jesus said it. Then I can do it. He says, come. But the whole premise of this today, and we've heard some great, great, oh, I'm sorry, Brian. Byron. Love your, he, he said, that's the, he, Byron said, love your neighbor. If you, if, you, if you want to usher in God's presence, he said, you've got to love your neighbor. He said, and, and we all know this, he's not talking about them people that live next door. He's talking about the folks that we run into. He's not talking about just the ones we know in this church. He's talking about some over in the other church. Or some may be on the street corner. He says, you've got to love your, if you want to see the hand of God move in your life, you've got to bring the glory of God back in place the same way David did. The Bible says he got out in front of the ark and he danced. He danced so hard he danced his clothes off. Because what was lost is found. And what was found was God's glory. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your saints. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this mighty, mighty man of God that's leading your people. So Father, I just ask that something was said today. I don't know who you intended to receive this today. But we all realize that it's time for us to bring the presence of God back into our lives. Getting the first love, the way we loved you when we first gave our lives to you, bringing it back. Teach us how to pray. Teach us to believe, thus says the Lord. Father, we give our lives to you today. We thank you today for every soul here. Father, if there's someone here today that needs a practical way of returning the glory back into their home, we're going to serve this front as an altar. Stir up their hearts today. This is my appeal. Whatever it is you need from God, God says, I'm here to supply all of your needs. He says, trust in me. Whatever it is, you may need prayer. You may have slipped away from your first love. Whatever it is that you need today, meet us here at this altar. I truly believe in my spirit.